In my ongoing quest to upgrade every single component in my cloud gaming server, we've come to the last piece of the puzzle. So hopefully by the time the day is over, I'll actually be able to install some games. Today's video is brought to you by Manscaped and the Performance Package 4.0, which includes everything you need to keep your yard looking its best. Having the right tool for the job is paramount, as you're not going to get the results you want with the wrong equipment. The Lawnmower 4.0 is IP67 rated, so you can look your best whether it's rain or shine. Plus, with its skin safe technology, you won't end up tilling instead of just trimming. You'll also get the Weed Whacker for ear and nose hair, Crop Preserver to keep your tomatoes dry, and the Crop Reviver to keep them cool. Go to manscaped.com slash craft computing to get 20% off free international shipping and two additional free gifts. That's manscaped.com slash craft computing. And remember, your balls will thank you. Welcome back to craft computing, everyone. As always, I'm Jeff. You might remember that I've already upgraded the storage in my cloud gaming server. Thanks to Wendell over at level one techs for sending me over four 800 gigabyte NVMe drives. However, that doesn't really give me enough space to install 12 gaming machines worth of games. Between those four drives, I'm only able to allocate around 120 gigabytes to each virtual machine, which in the modern time will only store about half of a Call of Duty, which means I need some more space. Now, while I would love to throw an absolute metric crap ton of NVMe storage at the system, cost is still a bit of a factor, so I think SATA is going to be the de facto winner. I do have a couple of these Intel 1.2 terabyte Enterprise SSDs. However, these are the spares for my servers out in my server rack. However, if you remember back to a couple videos ago, I recently consolidated all of the servers in my rack down to two epic systems, which means these drives are no longer spare and I'm no longer using all of the SSDs that were in my other servers. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? These are all of the SSDs out of my servers. Now, as I'm not using those servers anymore, it seems like a waste to just put them on the shelf. So we might as well use them in my cloud gaming server for some game storage. But that server doesn't have a lot of SSD mounts. So how am I going to get all of these disks inside? Now I could use the tried and true double-sided tape method, but I think I'd pretty quickly run out of surface area. So instead I figured I'd do it the right way with an IC Dock Express cage. This is a hot swap SSD tray that installs into a five and a quarter drive. And as it turns out, my cloud gaming server has three five and a quarter drive bays in front. There are a couple other advantages in this system as well. Number one, there are dedicated cooling fans on here to pull air over the top of the SSDs, helping to keep them cool. Each of these racks will hold six two and a half inch SSDs up to nine millimeters in height. And finally, while this is not an expansion backplane, meaning you still need six SATA connections for each SATA disk, this can be powered with only two SATA power leads, meaning that the cable clutter is significantly reduced. Now for starters, I've got two, four, six, eight, 10, I do have enough drives, cool. Uh, I have 12 drives to fill both of these six bay expanders. I'm not sure I'm going to use all six drives, but it's kind of nice knowing that I might be able to. But for right now, let's go ahead and get all of these out of their expansion caddies. And I'll put the caddies back in the servers they came from because I'm not a monster. And let's go ahead and get our storage configured and see if we can finally get some games installed on my cloud gaming server. Now that I have all of my drives out, let's go ahead and take a look at the IC dock housing themselves. This is the MB326, and again, it can hold six two and a half inch hard drives up to nine millimeters tall in a single five and a quarter bay. IC dock calls this a toolless solution. However, I'm inclined to call this a partially toolless solution. While the trays do have two little bumps on them to secure a two and a half inch drive as such, there are two screw holes in the bottom and I would highly recommend you use them. While the two pegs do keep the drive from sliding side to side, it does nothing for the drive staying in the tray itself. So we're gonna go ahead and screw all these trays in and then we'll get to installing this into my server.
A couple days and a whole bunch of testing later, and I'm finally back on my desk. And I made a bit of a whoopsie when putting all this together. But first off, let's go ahead and talk about the installation of the drives themselves. Like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, while IC Doc does say the Express Cage is a toolless system, I would recommend installing the screws to keep the hard drives in place. I tested toolless installation, and the drives were easily able to kind of flop around and even fall out of the cage when you were installing them into a server. Construction wise, the Express Cage is. Okay, I guess for the price, uh, it is $75 and ABS injection molded plastic. And while it's not the toughest thing in the world and does have a little bit of flexibility, it does work for installing drives into a backplane. So for $75, that is a pretty good deal to get six hot swap drive cages. For around $50 more, IC Doc has their Tough Cage lineup, which has this exact same model, but with all metal construction. So depending on your individual needs, you might want to opt for that rather than the plastic model. But enough about that, let's talk why it's two days later and I'm just now filming the outro to this video. And that's because I made a bit of a whoopsie. You see, on server motherboards, I've gotten so accustomed to just having any number of SATA ports that I want available. For example, I have 14 SATA ports available on the Chenboro NR12000 12 bay 1U chassis that I reviewed about a year ago, or the 8 SATA ports and 8 SAS ports available on my Supermicro H11 SSL motherboard that's inside my TrueNAS server. As it turns out, the ASRock Rack Rome D8 has only two 8643 SATA connections, meaning a maximum of 8 ports. So I did what any calm, rational person would do in my situation. I jumped onto Amazon and overnighted a High Point Rocket Raid HBA card with 16 6 gigabit SAS ports for only $279. And while that card should have been more than adequate to run the 12 Intel SATA SSDs I had installed in the system, for some reason or another, not a single drive was able to be recognized on the controller. And this project was going so smoothly too. So this is on its way back from whence it came, and I have an Adaptic HBA on the way forward later this week. That means today I'm going to be checking out performance on an 8 drive array rather than using all 12 disks. That also comes with the added bonus of keeping some of the drives as cold spares just in case of a disk failure. Inside Proxmox, I configured the drives into a single ZFS RAID Z2, giving me roughly 6.5 terabytes of usable space along with a 2 drive parity. For testing, I copied the virtual hard drives over to the new array, and inside the virtual machines ran Windows 10's built-in disk speed test, WinSAT, to check for both speed and latency. I set up a scheduled task on each virtual machine to run WinSAT at exactly the same moment and then sent the output to a text file. The numbers I'll be reading are an average of all the machines across three separate tests. With only a single virtual machine booted up, speeds were more than acceptable, managing 1250 megabytes per second in sequential reads and 615 megabytes per second in sequential writes. What's even more impressive is the random I.O. performance with 286 megabytes per second, which is nearly six times the performance of a standard SATA SSD. Latency was also very impressive, with the 95th percentile of operations needing just 0.26 milliseconds to begin and a maximum wait time of 1.75. Running four virtual machines does see our performance slow down considerably, but I would still consider this to be more than acceptable performance for a virtualized gaming PC. Random read speeds fell from 286 megabytes per second to just 77, or roughly 75% slower. Sequential reads fell by the same margin to 307 megabytes per second. Both of these make sense though, as we increase the load by a factor of four, why shouldn't we be running at just one quarter of the previous speed? Write speeds remained in the upper performance level for a SATA SSD at 510 megabytes per second. Latency increased as well, but not to the extreme that I was seeing before on just a pair of SSDs in previous testing. The 95th percentile was 2.12 milliseconds with a max time of 7.11. And finally, when running 12 virtual machines at the same time, is this going to be a workable solution for running gaming VMs? Or am I still going to need more storage bandwidth and lower latency? Actually, I think we have a winner here. In terms of random I.O., I actually saw an increase in performance over the four virtual machine tests with 77 megabytes per second. And this is the number that makes or breaks this test, as rarely are you going to be loading up sequential data when you're playing games. So why am I so impressed with only 77 megabytes per second? To put that number into context, a single SATA SSD will typically have a random read speed of around 50 megabytes per second. So the fact that 12 gaming VMs reading off of a shared array is still 50% faster than a SATA SSD just makes me all warm and fuzzy inside. 
Sequential reads and writes were equally as impressive, at 307 and 463 megabytes per second respectively. Our 95th percentile for latency was also slightly higher than the 4VM test at just 1.76 milliseconds. So with my storage finally up to snuff, what's next for this project? Well, while 6.5 terabytes is an impressive amount of storage, it also loses a bit of that grandeur when you realize you have to split that storage 12 ways, leaving each VM with only 500 gigabytes for all of their game installs. Inside ZFS is a feature called deduplication, which is a fancy word for saying if the same storage block exists in two locations, you only need to store the bytes from one of them. Let's say I have two identical one gigabyte files, but saved in different directories. Rather than taking up two gigabytes of storage space, it would only take up one gigabyte for the file itself, and then a couple extra kilobytes to reference the other locations the file should be. I've done this successfully in the past for document storage, but I have never tried it when running disks for virtual machines. So I'm curious to see not only if it will work, but will it increase performance in my VMs, as they would all be accessing the same storage blocks rather than bouncing to different addresses to find essentially the same data. Once I've got that answer, I think it's finally time to put this beast to the test, with 12 people logging in and playing games remotely. But I think this is where we're going to stop for today. As always, if you're interested in any of the parts from today's video, I will have Amazon and eBay affiliate links down in the video description. On your way down there, make sure to drop this video a like and subscribe to Craft Computing if you haven't done so already. Follow me on Twitter at Craft Computing to keep up with daily shenanigans like this. And if you like the content you see on this channel and want to help support me in what I do, consider joining the Patreon or Float Plane. Links are also down in the video description. Thank you all so much for watching this one, and as always, I will see you in the next video. Cheers, guys. That's a really good one. Beer for today is from Turning Point Beer in Redford, Texas. It is the You'll Never Drink Alone Irish Red Ale, clocking in at 6%. Kind of a butterscotch colored head on top of it. I have to say, this is pretty well balanced. It's got a nice malty front to it. Uh, I will say it's a little bit souring at the back end. Uh, I'm not quite sure what that is yet, but overall, very, very pleasant. A couple final thoughts on the beer before I finish it up and head out to the garage. I do like this beer quite a bit. Um, it's not nearly as bold as some reds that I like. It The maltiness, especially now that I've gotten down into the glass, is a little bit more subdued. But at the same time, that sour note on the end has also died down quite a bit and left me with a pretty well-balanced Irish red. Uh, I like this one. There's not a ton positive that I can say about it. I'm not going to wax poetic about this is the best red ever, but there's really nothing negative that I can bring to it either. I think this is just a solid example of a red beer. Cheers. Bonus beer from Single Hill Brewing. It is the Western Front West Coast IPA, brewed with Galaxy, Columbus Cryo, Simcoe, and Citra hops, which sounds like a delicious blend. 6.1%. If you're watching the cuts of this video, it's the beer that keeps on giving. This reminds me a lot of the Stone IPA, which is like a quintessential founding version of the West Coast IPA, but in a slightly more hop-forward, hop-centric version. Which, I guess, Stone themselves makes more hop-forward versions of the Stone IPA, like Fear Movie Lions or Scorpion Express. Uh, this reminds me a lot of that, those same characteristics. It's, it's hop-forward, it's not overly citrusy, it's more of the bitter, oily, clingy, drying, but very crisp and refreshing style of IPA. It's just good. All of these are just extra drives. And well, I believe in using the whole buffalo, the whole buffalo, I believe in using the whole buffalo, so we might as well take these out of their sleds and put them into my cloud gaming server. I'm sorry, I'm laughing at the whole buffalo. I don't know where that came from.